The beautiful Miroslava Starnova, better known simply as Miroslava, was a Czechoslovak-born Mexican film actress who appeared in a total of 32 films. Miroslava Stern was as beautiful as any star of Hollywood, from someone called the Queen, the Mexican Marilyn Monroe, and making the cover of Life magazine, most of you have probably never heard of this lovely and talented actress. She was nominated at the Aereo Awards for the film The Three Perfect Wives. She was born on February 26, 1926, and died on March 9, 1955, at the young age of 29. Her cause of death was ruled as self-inflicted, meaning she took herself out of here. But in her hands was a photograph of a mysterious lover, and the media ruled it death by unrequited love. But to so many, it seemed so fishy, like there's a cover-up. Her death did send shockwaves in Mexico with many different scenarios of what could have possibly happened. And what's crazy is all the stars wanted a piece of the pie. It seemed like the most popular stars of that day in Mexico were claiming to have been the first to find the body. We're claiming different scenarios of what could happen and that they knew so much. And it was a question being asked, why? Where did you guys all come from? Even till this day, decades later, the topic of her death is still shrouded in mystery. Was she a spy? Because some claim she was a Russian spy. She wasn't even from Czechoslovakia, for real. We still want to know what happened because it just doesn't add up. She was known as the Mexican Czech Marilyn Monroe. She was growing in popularity and had a beauty about her that was timeless. Though she never reached the heights of the likes of Marilyn, she is still an icon in the memories of those who loved her. In today's video, we will break down the fascinating and short life of Miroslava and go deep into what really happened. How did a beauty die so young? But first, hey friend, welcome to my channel, Kareen Allude, where we deep dive and break down the most iconic stars through history. If you're not yet subscribed, please be sure to do so. And if you already subscribed, please turn on your notification bell so you never miss an upload. Now, without further ado, let's get into this video. Let's start first with her childhood. Miroslava Sternova's life reads like a dramatic saga full of twists and turns. Born as Miroslava Stanklova in Tawar, Prague on February 26, 1926, her life took a shocking turn when her father passed away. Her mother remarried a Jewish doctor named Dr. Oscar Leo Stern, who adopted Miroslava, giving her a new name and a complex family dynamic. Dr. Stern was a well-respected psychoanalyst and a leading figure at a luxurious spa and to please not beg food. But their world would come crashing down as the shadow of World War II loomed. In 1939, with the Nazi threat growing, the family fled Czechoslovakia, only to find themselves locked up in a concentration camp for three weeks. They managed to escape to several Scandinavian countries before eventually settling in Mexico City in 1941. The journey was far from glamorous as they lost everything they owned. Dr. Stern quickly reestablished himself in Mexico as a top physician and became a prominent cultural figure, but tragedy struck when Miroslava's mother died of cancer in 1945. Miroslava's upbringing was anything but ordinary. With the backdrop of war, loss, and immigration, she faced the harsh realities of life early on. Sent to a boarding school in the United States to escape the chaos, Miroslava was a young girl torn from her roots, grappling with the loss of her grandmother who was left behind in the concentration camp in her homeland. I can't even imagine. She loved her grandmother and they unfortunately had to leave her behind in the concentration camp and she never knew what became of her grandmother. So imagine as a little girl what that would do to you. She battled intense feelings of exile, which led to her first attempt to take her own life as a teenager. At just 18, she caught the spotlight as a beauty queen at a dance event in Mexico City. This attention propelled her to pursue acting, where she soon became a star of the golden age of Mexican cinema. During her acting studies, Miroslava fell head over heels for a fellow student, Jesus Jaime Gomez Obregón, affectionately known as El Bambi. The whirlwind romance led to a marriage in February 1946. 
but heartbreak followed swiftly. Miroslava discovered that El Bambi was actually gay. This revelation shattered her dreams. As insiders claimed, he had married her to hide his true sexuality, fearing it might harm his career. This betrayal hit Miroslava hard, leading to another S attempt where she tried to take her life. That's what we're going to call it, S attempt, as she struggled to cope with the deception and previous trauma. And despite her personal turmoil, Miroslava, shown on screen, starring in around 27 films and earning comparisons to another iconic beauty, Marilyn Monroe. Both women were celebrated for their stunning looks and vibrant careers, but were also haunted by deep seated depression. They shared a quest for love and stability, yet faced the harsh realities of fame, relentless scrutiny, broken relationships and rumors about their private lives. Miroslava and Marilyn never crossed paths, but their lives mirrored one another in many ways. Both were said to have romantic ties with powerful figures of their time, and whispers of addiction to barbiturates surrounded them. The tragic endings of their lives were eerily similar, each found dead in her bedroom surrounded by mystery and speculation about the cause, with even murder being suggested. Both were discovered in their bedrooms by the housekeeper. Both had a mental balance which was fragile, a weakness that made them especially vulnerable to predators and the kind of men that would put them in danger. The two actresses, adored by the world, also battled inner demons that fame and fortune couldn't alleviate. Their stories remain a poignant reminder of the hidden struggles behind glamorous facades, illustrating the profound loneliness they endured despite their public adoration. It's a heartbreaking tale of beauty fame, and the ultimate search for peace. Miroslava Sternova was a shining star in Mexican cinema from 1946 to 1955, even making her mark in three Hollywood films. But her life took a tragic turn when she ended it by overdosing on sleeping pills. The scene was set for a mystery that could rival any of her films. Miroslava was found stretched out on her bed with a photograph clutched in one hand, but whose picture was it? That's where the plot thickens. So Katie Gerardo, which I will do a video for, she was a very popular Mexican actress, claimed she was among the first to discover Miroslava's body. But that story was met with a lot of skepticism and in reality, it was not true. It was Miroslava's housekeeper who made the grim discovery. So why did Katie Dorado spend such a tell like a story right who was telling the truth the housekeeper was trying to back up her claims with facts katie just seemed like why did you do that fame can be a funny thing you know that's all i'm gonna say like celebrity can die and everybody wants clout okay gerardo insisted the photo was of the famous mexican comedian mario moreno also known as kenton flas yet artistic manager fanny schatz supposedly swapped it for a picture of the spanish bullfighter luis miguel rumors swirled about why marisava took her life some said it was unrequited love for Luis Miguel, who had just tied the knot with Italian star Lucia Bose. Others whispered it was Kente Flas, who broke her heart. It seemed like everyone wanted a piece of this tragic story, and it became a publicity circus for all the celebrities and powerful figures who wanted attachment to it. When Miroslava was discovered, the question of which photograph she really held remains unresolved, but we do know she also held three letters in her hand. News of her death spread very quickly and within minutes of the police call a crowd of about 50 people showed up there were journalists photographers actors singers and even teenage fans gathered outside her home on kepler street eager to take a glimpse of the final chapter of a star's life in the end, Miroslava's death was surrounded by mystery and intrigue, with a multitude of stories and stars trying to attach themselves to her final act. It's a tale of scandal, secrecy, and the tragic loneliness that fame sometimes cannot erase. Rumors buzzed that Miroslava died in a plane crash with a Mexican businessman the day before her S attempt, but the truth was much less dramatic. She overdosed on barbiturates. That's what we're going to say the truth was, as was quickly revealed. Her body was found elegantly posed on her bed, dressed in a white negligee and a strawberry colored robe, lying on her right side. In her right hand, she clutched a picture of her lover. El Universal reported on the last interaction between Miroslava and her devoted housekeeper, Maria del rosario who had worked for her for nine years miroslava had told maria go home to rest and don't come until tomorrow evening 
don't come earlier because I won't be there. Obeying her employer, Maria returned the next day and not seeing Miroslava, assumed she was out. It wasn't until the following day that Maria discovered the tragic scene. Worried when Miroslava didn't enter her door, Maria called Miroslava's parents and Cuernavaca for permission to enter the room by force. She found Miroslava on the bed holding a photo of a Spanish bullfighter in one hand and three letters in the other. Miroslava had been alone for at least 30 hours, surrounded only by the loneliness that had plagued her life and the opulent decor of her mansion in Mexico City's upscale and Zura's neighborhood. Authorities decided not to move her body to the amphitheater for public viewing, instead handing it over to her family for a private farewell and cremation. The doctor confirmed that the body had indeed been undisturbed for over 30 hours. Miroslava Sternova's life was a roller coaster of drama, secrets, and heartbreak. Her struggle with mental health began early, and according to her father, Oscar Stern, Miroslava's battle with her nerves was a lifelong issue. She first attempted to take her own life at 17 while at a boarding school in New York. Her father's words echoed the depths of her struggle. She was often sick with nerves, end quote. Boy suggested more attempts did follow, like when her birth mother died of cancer and her first boyfriend died in the military. Her loyal housekeeper, Maria del Rosario, revealed that Miroslava was advised to seek hospital care, but she refused. Oscar Stern also pointed out that their traumatic escape from a concentration camp left deep scars. They had to leave Miroslava's grandmother behind, and this haunted Miroslava for years. Her psychosis was linked to the horrors she witnessed during the German invasion of Czechoslovakia, where she hid for over 36 hours under relentless bombardment. Miroslava's connection in Hollywood added Added another layer of intrigue. Her friendship with director Robert Rosen, once a Communist Party member, landed her on the notorious Hollywood blacklist during the witch hunts of the Committee on Un-American Activities. This scandal forced her back to Mexico, despite having starred alongside Hollywood icons like Anthony Quinn and Mel Ferrer, gossip columns even filled rumors of her being a Russian spy. These persistent rumors of her being the Russian spy really got to her and made her try to attempt to take her own life once again because she really wanted a career in America as well. She really wanted to be the next big thing, the next Rita Hayworth or Ava Gardner. But unfortunately, with these rumors, people were questioning whether her father, who is a Jewish man, was really her dad or was she just despite this whole story of her mother being dead, concentration camp, all of that. They just wasn't buying it and they did not want her to come into the United States to work. And they were also checking out out, like for childhood evidence of her childhood and stuff and I guess America just couldn't find any so at the time they just didn't trust that this was like a real person with real struggles it was just a story trying to come here and you know spy on us or whatever so that really devastated her and apparently she tried to take her life out and I know you guys are like why was America doing that uh, in the time, France and the European powers, the allies were using spies themselves, like Josephine Baker, which I did a video for. She was used as a spy for the French to spy on the Germans and stuff and bring back information. And she came as a spy, just a beautiful entertainer and dancer. So every country was using their entertainers as spies and they all had dramatic stories of their lives and their lives wouldn't check out. And because America, because France and, you know, European powers were using those same spies, they always suspected that others were using them too. And because they did, they were able to find out that there were indeed other spies from the other side that was coming in as entertainment or, you know, scientists or whoever you were. It didn't matter what field you were in. They would use you to come in and to spy and get intel and connect with powerful people and put you in positions. And what other way than to be a star from another country like Mexico, but somehow you're Czechoslovakian and, you know, comment below your thoughts with that. The persistent rumor claims she actually died in a plane crash while traveling with the enigmatic and powerful Jorge Pascal. And let me tell you why a lot of people believe this and it does kind of make sense hear me out according to whispers her body was secretly moved and quickly cremated by her family to cover up the scandal so no one really got to see her face right pascal a larger than life figure known for his shady dealings was rumored to have been obsessed with miroslava 
despite his ties to the famous actress Maria Felix, which I did a video for, which I will link in the comments, who is off filming in Spain, his connections ran deep, extending to powerful figures like Tarco Elias Calles, a notorious Mexican politician with a reputation for being fiercely anti-clerical and ruthless. Calles was also a high-level mason, and he got things done. He was in high places, right? Very high level Mason. Pascal's life was marked by allegations of smuggling, corruption, and even murder, making him the perfect character in the scandalous saga. He got away with a lot. Every time he'd be arrested, he'd be released, even for the taking of people's lives. Speculation intensified when it was revealed that Pascal's security chief was suspiciously avoided the supposed fatal flight, which crashed near San Luis Potosi. Somehow his security chief was not on board is as if they knew he was, it was like it was a hit on him but it just so happened that Miroslava was in the plane. Interestingly only six passengers were listed on the flight manifesto yet seven bodies were found but they only listed six. Mm. Some believe the mysterious seventh body was Miroslava's though no official link was ever made between her and Pascal because it would have been so scandalous. You know her father was wealthy and in high circles in Mexico. He was like a very famous, he was like a celebrity in his own right, her stepfather, right? And he had to pull strings and was like, I don't want my daughter's name attached to this guy or to ruin her legacy and stuff like that. Don't, they got the pool, especially in Mexico. At that time, all you needed was money to have the pool to control the narrative. So it's like, let's not list her because Pascal was also with Maria Felix. It would have been scandalous. She would have been looking like a home wrecker. It just wouldn't have been a good look all around for her to be with like this thug and also be like a homewrecker. Adding to the intrigue, Cuban actor Cesar del Campo stirred the pot by telling the press he had seen Miroslava just days before her supposed S attempt. He claimed she talked about traveling to Luis Potosi for personal engagements. Despite these rumors, the narrative of Miroslava's S attempt complete with three letters and a photo of her lover by her side overshadowed any conspiracy theories about the plane crash, but no one ever saw the body. And then when they found her then it went that people never knew stories of her trying to take her life before but those stories all of a sudden were coming out in the media through interviews with family that oh yeah yeah so she did try to take her life many times before here's the real story this is what happened with her grandmother this is what happened with this this is what happened with that and before then those stories were not out and she's not there to clarify or not so people were like were those stories even true or was it kind of like a way to get the media to understand that okay she you know always wanted to take her life so do not be alarmed that she actually did comment below your thoughts Miroslava Sternova's final words penned in three poignant letters offer a glimpse into her troubled heart two of these letters were in Czech intended for her father and brother while the third was for her lawyer Eduardo Lucio and in this letter she meticulously laid out her financial troubles instructing Lucio on how to settle her debts discreetly the letter to her brother Evo touched on the enigmatic connections to bullfighter Luis Miguel she wrote my Evo forgive me for causing you pain forgive me every Everything, but I can no longer live. Believe me, I love you terribly, but I would only be a hindrance and a shame for you. When you remember me, remember without remorse and without pain. I'll feel better, but I can't go on. I can send the silver bell to Luis Miguel, Luis Miguel, and may he be happy, I ask you. Her words, filled with sorrow, hint at a love lost or unfulfilled, yet she left the true reason for her despair unsaid. In her father's letter, Miroslava expressed regret for lacking the courage to continue to live, signing off with a tender check endearment. Kulka. She asked him to send the silver bell to Luis Miguel, a gesture that remains shrouded in mystery. The silver bell was representative of communicating with spirits, also to bring invoking collective memory. So like to maybe the memory of her, a bell is said to have been used to summon spirits. Maybe it's to summon her spirit. She kept saying, hey, give him the silver bell. Maybe it was, you know, some code or something like that to him. Again, it's just interesting how she ended up dead with these three letters perfectly held in her hands and a photo of her lover and all these stars showing up at her house. And then her body was cremated before anyone could see it. And it was just like all these stories about her wanting to take her life. All of these things happened. And it was like, okay, 
So it's just a lot of coincidences around her death that has made people suspicious throughout the years that something is just not adding up. And you know, since the beginning of time, they were they were doing their little rituals. It's, it, it was giving that to a lot of Mexico's conspiracy theories. It never really quite sat right with them. The scene of her departure was like something from a fairy tale gone dark. <laughs> a blonde beauty with Slavic features peacefully laying on her bed. Nearby, a portrait of her lover, Luis Miguel a vase and an ashtray with a half-smoked cigarette lay on the bedside table symbols of a life abruptly halted Luis Miguel upon hearing of her death expressed disbelief mourning the loss of a beautiful woman with a promising career unable to fathom why she chose such a final act so what do you think happened what do you think the real story is we don't know did she die in a plane crash where did all these stars came from and claimed they were the ones to see the body and then but the final story ended up being I guess when people started really questioning the stars being there it's so random you're just at her house in the morning and you saw her body and then you're you know just telling people like that then um it went to the housekeeper it just made more sense to say the housekeeper what do you think happened either way we will never know so we just gotta go with the official story that she took her own life and that she did go through a lot the concentration camps the sadness of her mom's death etc and you know being labeled a spy all of those things her gay husband <laughs> i don't know she went through it comment below your thoughts i'm really curious to see what theories you guys come up with in the comments because this story was really really interesting to me it just spoke out to me and i wish there was more on her story but because of the time and because it was mexico there was just not enough um you know information to get around during those times on those type of issues they just weren't keeping up with them you can't really find much but i love you guys so much thank you for tuning in if you like the music you're listening to the link is in the description i will see you in the next one